Good evening. Seeing the time and seeing we have a quorum, I call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. I invite you to rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to be led by Iman Burgess. We will then remain standing for a moment of silence in recognition of 9-11, Patriots Day, and also those who have served education in Baltimore County. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm respect. Oh. Thank you, Ms. Burgess. She's joining us from Deep Creek Elementary School. Our second item is consideration of the September 10th, 2019 agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? So there are no changes or additions to tonight's agenda. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Opens Meetings Act for the following reasons. One, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, and nine, to conduct collective bargaining negotiations or to consider matters that relate to negotiations. The minutes of the closed session and informational summary can be found on our website at www.bcps.org slash board slash informational dash summaries dot html. Our next item is selection of speakers. Sign-up cards were available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting. Board practice limits to 10 the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the board. The completed sign-up cards for this evening have been placed in this box, and the first 10 drawn from the box will be our speakers for tonight during the public comment portion of the meeting. Of course, if fewer than 10 sign-up cards are received, all those who signed up will be permitted to speak. Our first speaker this evening is Dr. Bosch Ferrone. Our second speaker is Ms. Sharon Saroff. Our third speaker is Brittany Burgess. Our fourth speaker is Daniel Burgess. Our fifth speaker is Bill Groff. Our sixth speaker is Ann Groff. And those are all our speakers for this evening. Thank you. Our next item is new business personnel matters. And for that, we call on Ms. Lowry to present the personnel matters. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. I would like the board's consent for the following personnel matters. Retirements, resignations, leaves of absence, deceased recognition of service, certified appointments, consideration of the Southeast Area Education Advisory Council appointment, and consideration of the Southwest Area Education Advisory Council appointment. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits E1 through E7? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. 
Any opposed? Any abstained? Thank you, Mr. Offerman, for your abstention. The motion carries. Thank you. Our next item of business is administrative appointments. And for that, we call on Dr. Williams to present the administrative appointments. Madam Chair and members of the board, I would like to bring forward for your approval the following administrative appointments. The assistant principal at Cadenceville Elementary School and pupil personnel worker in the Office of School Climate. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in Exhibit F1? Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Our first candidate is Alicia Etienne, the assistant principal at, at Catonsville Elementary School. Please stand. was the former resource teacher in the Office of Mathematics in 2019, resource teacher at Woodmore Elementary School, Colgate Elementary School, and Owings Mills Elementary School. Uh, she brings to us nine years of service in Baltimore County, and this evening supporting her is her friend Chris Hess. You, you both can stand. You both can stand so we can see. And I was told the principal is present as well. Please stand. Thank you. <laughs> Our second candidate is Rebecca Pierre the a pupil personnel worker in the Office of School Climate, Pupil Personnel Services, and Responsive Student Programming. Welcome to Baltimore County Public School. She's an external candidate. She brings eight years of experience as the school climate specialist at the Shepherd Pratt Health System, CINA attorney in the law office of Darlene Wakefield, Children's Legal Services of Baltimore for five years, staff attorney of the House of Roof, domestic violence, legal client, uh, clinic, sorry, uh, 1.9 years, and a teacher in New York City Public Schools for four years. Supporting her this evening is her daughter, Malin. Please stand. <laughs> and congratulations to both candidates. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Our next item is item G, public comment. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by his staff. While we encourage public input on policy, programs, and practices within the purview of this board and this school system, this is not the proper forum to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. We encourage everyone to utilize existing dispute resolution processes as appropriate. I remind everyone that inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. I ask you to observe the three minute clock, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the bell or see that time has expired. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time, and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related to public education in Baltimore County. If not selected, the public may submit their comments to the board members in hard copy or via email at boe at bcps.org. I now call on our stakeholder groups to speak. And this evening, we have Mr. Seth Rich from the Teachers Association of Baltimore County. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Hen, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. On behalf of Cindy Sexton, I bring greetings and remarks tonight. The start of the school year has been exciting and full of hope and promise. First day visits with Dr. Williams and Dr. Oshevsky and their entire entourages were well received. 
The schools we visited showcased the very best of BCPS administrators, teachers, and students. But also, and equally important, the schools were clean and well kept inside and out, and I want to thank the building operations workers and ground crews for their hard work over the summer and all year long. Students were coming in late, looking for lost items, needing to call home. I want to thank the administrative assistants for their vital role in keeping the school running smoothly. And teachers know the value of additional support in the classroom. So also thanks to our additional adults and our paraeducators for all you've done to make the beginning of the school year a positive one. And our bus drivers and transportation department, what a challenge you face and how you have risen to do your best to and from school. Thank you for your hard work. And to food and nutrition service workers who feed our students and everyone else who plays a role in the lives of these students, thank you. And to BCPS leadership and members of the board, thank you for working with me, Cindy Sexton, answering my questions and responding to my concerns. I look forward to continuing our collaboration. On another note, and speaking faster, please remember to reach out to your legislators and encourage them to fund the Kerwin Commission recommendations. This entails so much that is needed in education, not just a change to the current funding formulas for schools, but so much more that will benefit our students moving forward. All of us, those in this room, those listening online, and everyone who's vested in the education of children, we all need to reach out to these decision makers and let them know that we need Kerwin funded. You've all received invitations to the Tabco Town Hall on September 26th at six at Parkville High. We want to show our elected officials who have also been invited that we all care about public education and we stand in support to do what is best for students. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention World Suicide Prevention Day, which is today, and the Mind Over Matters campaign the BCPS has ongoing this year. Thank you again to all who make our schools and our school communities places where our students learn and grow physically, emotionally, socially, and intellectually. Thank you. Our next constituent group is Mr. Tom DeHart from the Council of Administrative and Supervisory Employees. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Board Chair Causey, Vice Chair Hen, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. Early last spring, the school board submitted an operating budget to the county executive that included longevity steps, as well as a 2% cost of living or COLA increase for all employees in the five BCPS bargaining units. Around that same time, the county executive appeared before this board and informed us of an $81, $81 million deficit. Obviously, county funds spent on salary increases in any form would be precarious. The county executive did approve step increases for all associations, but delayed the COLA for three of the five until June of 2020. Thus, 51 case employees will actually lose money this year as they are on the last step of our salary structure and won't receive, receive a COLA to keep up with inflation. Fortunately, Senate Bill 1030 provided $9.8 million for the county to fund teacher salaries. This money could only be used for teacher salaries. Consequently, teachers received a 2% COLA as of July 1st, 2019. But the county also, the county executive also found money in county funds for another association's COLA, and they began on July 1st of 2019 as well. Now this is important, so please understand. Case is by no means suggesting that all employees shouldn't get the salaries for which they negotiated. And we certainly understand and applaud the state funding that is directed at teachers. But while we have absolutely no animosity towards the association whose COLA was funded by local funds, we feel it's extremely disingenuous for the county executive to single out one of the four remaining bargaining units for local funding while lamenting an inherited deficit. Case thanks this board, its leadership, and Dr. Williams for being receptive to potentially funding the other three associations' COLA 
by transferring funds within the budget. While it wasn't possible to do that, your openness, willingness, and support is heartening. Now, with all of this said, the case board of directors has voted to not sign our master agreement, and we will work without an agreement, as the only item negotiated last year was salary. This is done as a sign of disappointment and dissatisfaction of our negotiated agreement not being funded in an arbitrary and capricious manner. This will not impact the hard work and extra effort given by these professionals every day. Negotiations for 2021 Case Master Agreement begins next week, and we've already alerted the board and the superintendent that they should be prepared for us to make up for any lost earnings and retirement benefits incurred this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next stakeholder speaker for this evening is Nicholas Argyros from the Baltimore County Public School Organization of Professional Employees. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Han, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. We sincerely appreciate your efforts to support a 2% call cost of living distribution for all bargaining units. As a result of Senate Bill 1030, Teacher Salary Incentive Grant, the county executive was able to provide TAPCO with a 2% COLA effective July 1, 2019. Using county funds, he, was also, he also decided to provide a 2% COLA to ESPBC effective July 1, 2019. The remainder of the bargaining units did not receive a COLA for the same period. Such exceptions create inequities among bargaining units and long-term financial implications for employees left out of the COLA distribution. The Baltimore County government's budget deficit this year prevented us from negotiating other salary concerns, such as employees on the OP salary scale that have reached the maximum steps on their grade and have not received a raise. A 2% COLA July 1st would have benefited these employees and their families. <laughs> to rectify what we view as inequities in the county executive's budget for this fiscal year, we will vigorously pursue remedies during the upcoming negotiations, and we appreciate in advance your support for all the bargaining units. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening is from the Northeast Area Education Advisory Council, Ms. Lily Lee. Good evening and welcome. Dear BOE members, and our new superintendent, Dr. Williams, my name is Lily Lee, the co-chair of Northeast Advisory Council, and I'm here to speak for our Northeast area communities and parents. As now everybody already knew, when Northeast area had an emergency crisis of school bus overcrowding problem, and all the news stations have been covering it. In the way, Northeast Advisory Council wants to give urgent suggestions to our new superintendent, Dr. Williams, and the new transportation director, Mr. Green. Number one, please make it an urgent plan on your schedule for this week or next to visit our loving, caring, and dedicating bus drivers and attendants on every Northeast bus lot, like Kenwood bus lot, Rosedale Bus Lot and our wonderful bus contract company, Harris Bus Company, if I didn't miss any. Our bus drivers are heartbroken. They are crying. They are waiting for our top administrators to show the care, sympathy, and appreciation of their hard work and their pains of being separated from their older kids they used to drive due to the complete rerouting in our Northeast area. Please visit them in person, shake hands with them, and say thank you. They are the backbone of our transportation department. Most of our bus drivers and attendants, they work on this job, not for this kind of minimum pay income, 
but for the strong bond they had with the students they had been transporting for 10 or 20 years. Our kids are their babies, and now they are separated from their babies by this complete rerouting thing. Please comfort them. Your visiting them in person this week or next will stop them from quitting the job or retiring early. That's the quickest fix. Otherwise, BCPS will have to continue to combine buses due to bus driver's shortage, and our children will have to sit on the floor or stand on the aisle. Number two, please explain to our bus drivers why it needed a complete rerouting. Bus drivers still don't understand why a lot of good routes are redone as well. Why can't they just redo the messy ones and leave good ones alone? Also, this new transfinder routing software sometimes directs the bus drivers to a name road. And how can bus drivers know where to go? Bus drivers are asking why this new software didn't get double checked by humans' eyes first before it was put into the field. All in all, we in Northeast Advisory Council would like to see our new superintendent, Dr. Williams, and our new transportation director to visit all Northeast area bus drivers in person this week or next. And it will be the only way for a quick fix for now. We really hope that things will be improved before parents are running out of patience. Thank you. Our next stakeholder speaker for this evening is from the Northwest Area Education Advisory Council, Mr. Mike Hoffmeister. Good evening and welcome. First, I'd like to thank the board and Dr. Williams for listening to me this evening. My name is Mike Hoffmeister. I'm current president of the Alumni Association of Franklin High School. I would like to bring to your attention a historical event that will occur in 2020. Actually, it started with the opening of the school year this year with the class of 2020. I'm referring to the oldest high school in Baltimore County, Franklin Academy or Franklin High School. It will celebrate 200 years after its establishment in 1820 by the General Assembly of Maryland. At first, the students attended school with private residents, and it wasn't until 1826 that a building was completed. That building still stands today and is used by the Baltimore County Public Library. Maybe some of the building construction companies for a school system could take some lessons. That's another topic another day. I'm not here this evening to ask for money. I'm here to make you aware of the Alumni Association, Franklin High School, and many community organizations are preparing for a rededication of the school in January 2020. The exact date and time has not been set because of the pending reservations to the original academy. We would like the school board members and representatives from the school system to attend. Formal invitations will be sent out when the date and locations have been finalized. Franklin High School awards about $110,000 in scholarship each year. Of the $110,000 in scholarships, the Alumni Association contributes about $30,000 towards those scholarships. Um, there are scholarships set up in, in family names and company names. Franklin has graduated many students that have established their names in history. We are proud and acknowledge them on our website. Two of the most known is B. Dr. B. Oliver Cole, known as the First Lady of Maryland Pharmacy. She was the first woman to receive a law degree in the University of Maryland and female acting dean of the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. First pro full professional sh ship at the School of Pharmacy. She graduated in 1904. Over the past several years, Franklin High School, led by Pat Muskusker, 1981 graduate alumni association, has established a working relationship with one of our first great um, graduates. Thomas Rowe Price, founder of a global management firm as bears his name, graduated in 1904 and was 16 years old. Uh, they're the oldest, uh, the largest corporate employee in Baltimore County. They've established scholarships and are hosting career days at their headquarters for Franklin students. As I said, we're not here this evening to ask for money, but ask for the support of the school board and the school system in the support of this historical event. Um, thank you in advance and appreciate the time. 
Thank you. Our next speaker for the e this evening is Marlena Purcell, and she is from the Southwest Area Education Advisory Council. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Take it easy on the first time. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and Dr. Williams. Um, this will be short. I just wanted to take a moment to, to introduce myself. I am Marlena Collington Purcell. I am a proud fifth grade parent in the Southwest area, and I am the chair for the Southwest area for the 2019-2020 academic year. Um, with a calendar week already undergo, I simply just want you to know our three top goals for this school year. The first one being the capacity issues um, that are incurring at Johnny Cake Elementary School, as well as Catonsville High and Middle School. Um, the second one being school safety, along with bullying, and of course, cyberbullying. And the last one being our academic rigor, including class choices, as well as identification of students that need more. We also um, intend to attend our town hall meetings that Dr. Williams has set up at Catonsville High School and Whitlawn High School in order to hear our community voices and to be there, of course, for all parties. As I end, I would like to just personally thank you for the appointment of additional members. We're short and we're striving to be more. <laughs> and I would also like to thank you for um, our area superintendent, community superintendent, Dr. Jones, who's here behind. She has attended all of our meetings last year. Um, we look forward to forging a partnership with you all as well as our two um, district, um, sorry, our two board members as well as our district councilmen. Um, in closing, oh, that did good. In closing, <laughs> I just simply would like to offer you any time on the second Mondays of your um, of your month. I know that it may not be in your district, but to come on out and hear us at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. And our final stakeholder for the evening is Megan Stewart Sicking from the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee. Good evening and welcome. Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Dr. Williams, and members of the board, good evening to all of you. Our CCAC executive board is very excited about several initiatives for the 2019 to 2020 school year. First, in your email board members, in your email from this afternoon, probably around five o'clock, just before I came here, um, you will have an email from me with an attachment and the first, it's um, the first page of the Hand in Hand newsletter, which will be distributed later this month. The first page contains our meeting dates, locations, times, and topics. Um, we are excited to kick off in October with executive functioning presented by Dr. Tana Hope from the Kennedy Krieger Institute we will then continue with updates from the Office of Special Education and preparation for our December meeting with Dr. Williams. We will also be covering transition, autism, and literacy later in the year. We hope each of you will join us for a meeting or two sometime this year. Also, as an attachment in your email today, you will find a copy of a poster from a special project that we worked on last year. We worked on belief statements about IEP teams and meetings, and it was a collaborative project between CCAC and the Office of Special Education. We included feedback from special ed parents, administrators, and community members, such as lawyers and advocates. It is our hope that the poster with belief statements will be provided for every team meeting room by November and remind us of important elements of effective teams such as communication, civility, data-driven decision-making, and cultivating positive relationships throughout the year. I have sent you copies of the posters as an attachment and I hope you have a chance to take a look. We also look forward this year to continuing to support the collaborative relationship between the Office of Special Education and the Office of English Language Arts. We will also continue working closely between CCAC and advocacy groups such as Decoding Dyslexia Maryland. We are happy to see huge strides being made in literacy resources, training, and outcomes over recent years and look forward to more progress in the future. 
Over the summer, we also had a chance to meet with Cindy Sexton from TABCO, and we look forward to developing a positive advocacy relationship between OSE, TABCO, and parents. Finally, and as always, you're used to this from us, we will spend time communicating with you at board meetings and directly as individuals regarding budget requests this fall. We will continue to advocate for more resources in our schools and look forward to following up with more specifics over the next Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our stakeholder uh, comments. I now call on our public and our first speaker for public comment is Dr. Bosch Farone. Good evening and welcome. Long time no see. My apology for not attending August meetings. Good evening to all. I want you to know why I have been here for 25 years, 1995. My son was in Baltimore County Public School and one time he came with a book which talks about getting the facts. In some lands, people don't talk when they sit down to eat. In China, no one talks at all. And then it goes more into defaming China. Do you know someone without a name? Everyone has a name now. And then it talks about a country that people don't have names. This is a typical stereotype. The one that really blew my top at the time, it says, the Arabs eat five meals at one time. First, they put eggs inside the fish. Next, they put the fish inside the chicken. Then they put the chicken inside the sheep. All of this is put inside the camel. It is cooked then it's time to eat. The reason I'm here is really a reflection of that event before. And having been here for so long, I'm not really sure that this school system truly does not teach stereotype, especially Islamophobia, especially Arabophobia. To me, it's not really just about Arabs. It's really about treating people equally. So, you know, in the past, I asked you many times about the Jewish holidays. The school system closed on the Jewish holidays for 25 years. That's worth, in my professional opinion, $75 million of advertisement money. It did not offer that to Muslim holidays, despite our large numbers. And this year, when the school system opened the schools on the Muslim holidays, and didn't do the same thing for the Jewish holidays. So I'm asking you always to remember equity and equality. I know it's a trip, but I have been here for 25 years, and I will still be here as long as any practice of Islamophobia, Arabophobia, discrimination of any other categories, color, ethnicity, religions, etc., is being done in the school system. I ask you to remember that when you talk about policies, and I ask you to remember that we pay taxes. Thank you. Our next speaker for this evening is Ms. Sharon Seroff. Good evening and welcome. I want to try to start this uh, public comment with a little bit of positivity because unfortunately in 17 years of doing advocacy, I feel that this school year is the most chaotic I've ever experienced in a start. I received a phone call today, however, from a student who started her first day in a new school 
in one of our high schools, and she called to say to me, thank you, that for the first time she belonged and felt she belonged in a school. In 15 years, this is the first time. This is why I do what I do. And this was the light, this was telling me that I need to continue even though there's a whole lot of chaos going on. And I have said that I will provide <coughs> suggestions for improvement, and here is one. I have repeatedly over the past year and a half asked for collaboration between parents, advocates, and resource people from the Office of Special Education and other offices. And the response I get is, we don't have enough staff. Um, we're here to support our schools. We feel that the data might be tainted if we constantly have somebody there preventing us from doing our job. When I go into a school to do an observation, I go with an administrator and I welcome that administrator because I feel that that person is going to see what I see. At least that's my hope. Why can't it be the other way around where I get to see what the resource people and the BCBAs get to see when they go into the school and observe the student? So as a suggestion, let's get that collaboration going. It used to happen. Let's get it going again so that we can fulfill our obligation to the people that we serve, which are the students and the parents. Thank you. Our next speaker for the evening is Brittany Burgess. Good evening and welcome. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Brittany Burgess, and the reason I came tonight was to make you guys aware and to speak on behalf of my daughter. My daughter is eight years old. She's in the third grade at um, Deep Creek Elementary School. On yesterday, I picked her up from school, and she and her friend were enjoying their lunch, just minding their own business, being girls, when two of our other classmates came up to her, her and her friend and said some racial, sexual, sexual, and mean things to them. This is hard to talk about, try to be strong for my daughter, but I never thought in 2019 that I would have to, to sit down and talk and comfort my daughter for some of the things that some of her counterparts of another race would say to her. And I just want to make you guys aware, hope, hoping that somebody will do something about it, talk to her, implement something to these school systems. When she told me some of the things that happened to her, I found out that some of these other things happened to other girls of color. And it's just ain't fair. Um, I go talk to the school and asked her, and I asked my daughter, did she say anything to her, her teacher? She said her did and nothing was done. Teacher told her she would do something and did nothing as my daughter sat there and watched these, kid, these, uh, these two same classmates tease her and her friend in the back of the classroom. My daughter don't deserve that. She go to school, she get good grades, she stand up for others, she's very loved and, every, and everywhere she goes. And I don't understand why. This happened to her in this school, and something needs to be done about it. Ma'am, thank you for coming. 
and thank you for sharing with us. What I would like to do is to ask, uh, we have a staff member that can step outside and speak to you okay. about this. Okay. We do care about each and every student to have a positive environment to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker for this evening is Mr. Daniel Burgess. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for your time. Uh, I'm sure my wife will speak into detail about uh, things that happened to my daughter and the list of other children just he found out that these things were happening to since the 2018 school year, most of which were Nigerian or African American and nothing was done. But I'd like to also talk at this point in time about what could be and should be being done. I notice a lot of these names and I'd like to put some faces with them. Uh, I'm an advocate for law enforcement. I've been doing community work um, for the last year and a half now. I run a program called the Policing and Parenting Partnership. I'm responsible for working with the law enforcement officers and the kids that are mentored in the program. And a former teacher of Baltimore County Public School System who resigned last year because she could not tolerate the school system's lack of effort to be involved. Over 20 years uh, in the school system of Baltimore County uh, public system, I'm pretty sure a lot of you gotten emails from her for the course of the last three months. Her name is Jennifer Shepard. Again, 20 years in Baltimore County public school systems. She runs our entire division of the work that needs to be done. Uh, we came up with a wonderful program that uh, was supposed to be put in place in the school system this year to stop things like this from happening. Uh, Ms. Shepard doesn't get paid, nor do I. This is a volunteer program. I've heard all these wonderful people ask for funding and different things to implement this, but we have a community of just parents and hardworking people who are willing to get involved, do the work. Uh, we spent our own money. Uh, we've got 14 different businesses in Baltimore City and Baltimore County that fully fund us and support this. And all we asked for was a chance to be heard and a chance to have our program brought to attention. On June the 10th, we talked to or sent emails out to S. Muster, W. Bates, R. Jones, G. Roberts, that's Truesdale. On June 22nd, Sean Vision was or Bison. And again, I work with the police department on this issue, so uh, Jen Shepard can testify more to this. But because I run the program, she CC'd me in on all these emails. Um, and uh, uh, Sean Vision at the Public Safety Forum, a conversation was had on July the 13th, Mr. Rob McMillan, the district that my daughter's school goes to, uh, Kathleen, uh, Ms. Kathleen yourself, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Jen Shepard, I'm pretty sure you're also familiar with Ms. Terry Anderson, uh, her son Nathaniel, her issues made the son. These are people who are working with us voluntarily trying to come up with a solution and I've had wonderful ideas. Um, we actually developed a mobile application. I mean, it's just crazy. And since June the 10th, we have not had a three minute conversation with, uh, besides Ms. Julian Rowe, I'd like to personally thank her for all her work and all her cooperation from day one with us and supporting our community and hearing our voices. But Mr. McMillan, uh, Ms. Hinn, uh, Mr. Williams, Mr. McMillan, again, I can submit a list of emails asking for just an opportunity. I hate the fact that things like this have to happen before get people get involved. I hate the fact that the community Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Thank you. Our next speaker for the evening is Mr. Bill Groth. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, board members, and welcome, Dr. Williams. <clears throat> A stack of dollar bills. Stat has cost over $500 million bills and counting since its inception. Or more simply put, over a half a billion dollars. 500 million $1 bills stacked one on top of another would reach almost 34 miles 
high. Sadly, for all that hard-earned money paid for by the taxpayers of Baltimore County, the latest test scores show we have barely moved the proverbial needle measuring the educational achievement of our students. Why am I telling each of you this tonight? Well, it's simple. Each of you sitting in this fine room with richly paneled walls, brass name plates, and lined with pictures of our students watching are here for one purpose, governance. Dictionary.com defines it thusly, governance, a noun, exercise of authority, control. You see, my esteemed board members, you are here in this fine room to make sure that the right things happen to ensure that all 117,000 students of BCPS get the best, safest education possible for the money this county has to spend. Yep, you govern Team BCPS. All of these well-educated, hard-working folk who wear the blue and white badges, they work for you. <clears throat> you were not put here just to watch over the money, but also the direction and purpose of each and every initiative this administration has undertaken to carry out the mission of the Baltimore County Public Schools. Big task. So each of you must make sure that every program Every effort, every dollar spent goes toward proven, tried, and true practices, programs, and initiatives that will result in all of our students being well-rounded, totally prepared to be productive citizens, earn a living, raise a family, care for the sick and elderly, and in short, take over for each of us someday. Public education is not one big experiment like STAT. It must be proven dependable, and the results must be verifiable because each child gets only one chance at a free, publicly funded start in life. My point in all this, please don't be afraid to govern. Adopt the mantra of the X-Files. The truth is out there. Question everything. Check the numbers, review the performance, verify the outcomes, and if they don't add up, be bold and just say no. Govern. I come to you tonight both as a taxpayer and as one of the 19 appointed commissioners of the Baltimore County School Board Nominating Commission that worked to place four of you <clears throat> on this esteemed board. The voters of this great county Thank you. Our final speaker for public comment is Ms. Ann Groth. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, members of the board, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Hen, and Dr. Williams, welcome to BCPS. My husband and I, as well as our parents, are and were retired teachers in BCPS. 132 years combined. We like to think that our generation is leaving BCPS in good condition, just like it was left for us. We've invested a lot. My sons went to school in BCPS, and it was awesome. But are the students of today getting that same quality? I worry. So I have some suggestions. Teaching has become a revolving door. That's a quote from a recent article in The Sun on teacher retention. Here's one suggestion. Take a good look at the data that I've heard about on teacher assaults. By last June, five to 10 a week. Teachers and their students need to feel safe. Who wants to teach in a dangerous environment? Even the most dedicated teachers will not stay if under threat of assault. Two, take a hard look at our early childhood practices. Current practices for our K-3 students are out of step with what the research tells us. We need people in leadership with a deep understanding of how young students learn and what the literature tells us about appropriate practice. Dr. Williams, please find people who have real knowledge and backgrounds in early childhood education and talk to the teachers. Ask any kindergarten teacher what needs to change. Give them a voice pump them for knowledge, they know so much, give the teachers autonomy. 
Since the inception of STAT, I voiced my concern about the half a billion dollars that was spent on a technology program that to date has not produced measurable results. It also conflicts with the health and safety information coming out in research about screen time. There is a BCPS Health and Safety Committee. To my understanding, sadly, it has not met recently. Why not? Three, get that committee going again. Four, and finally, please do more than talk about equity, fairness, and diversity. Give our Muslim students a holiday in the calendar. In a few short years, my grandson will be starting school. Will he be safe in school? Will he be safe on the bus? Will the bus pick him up on time? Or will I be advising my son, much to my deep lament, move to another district? I hope not. All the children in BCPS deserve the same great education my children had. All means all. Thank you for your service and all that you do and for giving me the opportunity to share my opinion. Please do your best. I know you will do your best. Thank you. Thank you. We also had an opportunity for individuals to sign up for public comment to speak on board policies. Uh, there were no sign-ups. There were no speaker sign-ups. So that concludes our public comment portion of the meeting. The next item of business is the superintendent's report, and for that I call on Dr. Darrell Williams. So good evening, everyone. Um, just an announcement we will be following up regarding the Deep Creek situation, as you heard today. I would like to begin by looking back at our first week of school. It was my pleasure to kick off the school year by visiting 15 schools last week. The learning, laughter, and enthusiasm were contagious. I want to thank our educators for not only welcoming our students and getting them settled into new routines, but also for uh, diving right into rigorous and engaging instruction starting on our very first day. I look forward to visiting all schools by the end of this school year. I've said many times that every child deserve, deserves to have at least one adult at school whom they trust. Uh, that sense of connectedness is one way that we can support student mental health, an issue raised by our very own student member of the board. I'm proud to work with Omar to support students all year, and I'm glad that schools honored World Suicide Prevention Day today by giving students opportunities to become familiar with school-based mental health resources, including our school counselors, social workers, psychologists, and nurses. This is just the beginning of our year-long Mind Over Matters campaign with a focus on student and staff mental health. Follow along with our hashtag, I Will Listen. You heard earlier, I would like to formally invite all of Team BCPS students, family, staff, and residents to my series of community conversations, which will start in about two weeks. This is an informal opportunity to share your priorities as we look ahead to our future together. The sessions will run from 6 to 7 p.m. at 10 high schools with two options in each area of the county. We'll start at Dundalk High School on September 25th and end at Carver Center on October 29th. So check the bcps.org for dates and locations. And finally, thank you team communications. And finally, let's take a moment to celebrate our highlights from our summer learning opportunities. We'll end with scenes from our first day. Hey, Team BCPS, being off for this summer is great. We enjoyed the summer rays, but we also continue to expand our knowledge and growth, so let's take a look. I'm here at art camp because I like art. It's good for when I'm stressed, and, it, and it, I just like creating things with like clay and painting. It's a nice camp to come to. It, you can meet some great people and learn some new things with some great teachers. It's important to have this program in place because it gives students this time during the summer just to express themselves. Me, 
I love singing. Singing helps me describe my emotions and especially with my facial expressions, I can just go on and basically describe what I'm trying to say with my face. This is my fifth year participating and I think one of the big things that draws me back is just the enthusiasm from all the teachers here. They're taking time out of their summer to come and they're just so knowledgeable about music and all these techniques and they put so much like time and passion into it. And our VCP students were able to get hands on experience and be involved in some amazing events. So we're doing our summer refresh process, and our summer refresh process consists of bringing devices into this area from the elementaries and middle schools so that they can be cleaned, determine what's wrong with them, move through a repair process, and then be prepared to go back out to our middle schools so they can start the school year with clean working devices the first day. I always had an interest in computers, so because of that I can't do any of classes related to computers. So this really helps me actually get hands-on experience about what I'm looking at. It's so cool, like, I guess I look inside, I get to know what causes what to happen, and I feel like so intelligent just like knowing, especially teaching other people how to work with it too. I'm in the IT magnet at my school, so I wanted to do a bit more hands-on and get more into the work field. Right now, my favorite station is repair. One reason why I say that is because I prefer to do like hardware things and seeing like the whole parts of the computer and be able to like go in, repair it, put it back together and just see all the components of the computer. Whoa, that's a big one. That's I wanted to get involved in this program because I wanted to be able to be that teacher that can impact students' lives and not just be the teacher that stands up and just teaches just to get that across to them. I want to be able to help them like further not just their knowledge but their personal lives as well. I'd love to come back and teach for Baltimore County Public Schools because they have helped me grow so much as a person. Like after my grandparents passed away, it's like they have really brought me to realize that teachers are needed more than ever and like teachers are more important to students and their learning. I'd like to thank Avid because Avid helped me as well as my mother, not only grow into the shoes my father left behind, but Avid also gave me the tools I needed to take them down a different path. Thank you. <laughs> then it felt good speaking in front of everybody because it was really a great opportunity. It helped me really learn how to express myself. Uh, this was really a challenge for me. I used to stutter and it made me feel like I overcame a lot of obstacles. It felt great to be able to share my story with over a thousand people, and it just wants me to go up, no other way but up from here. Please turn your tassels from the right side of your cap to the left. Go forth and make a difference in our community, in our world. Go forth and be you. You guys have a first of the day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome home. Welcome home! What was great about today, we actually saw teaching and learning happening in every classroom. We want a great challenge for our students. We want rigor in every classroom and just to see what's happening in our classes today just says we are on the right track here in Baltimore County Public Schools. Well, I enjoyed my first week back to school and I hope you did too. Have a great school year! Thank you. Our next item is, the, is my chair report. Tonight I will take a brief look back and a longer look forward. It is hard to believe that this board has officially been in place for only nine months. We have accomplished much. We made a uh, connections in our communities, made ourselves available to our constituents. We sought and provided information. We attended graduations. We poured through budget books. We worked with BCPS staff and we hired a permanent superintendent, Dr. Williams. I hope that all BCPS families enjoyed the lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer as the weeks flew by for so many of us. In mid-August, board members joined the superintendent to welcome new teachers at a two-day new teacher orientation. A day later, we also welcomed our administrators. The last week of August, Many board members attended a luncheon for elected officials and appointed officials held at the Maryland State Fair. BCPS students were well represented at the fair in agricultural events, 4-H competitions, and even Lego competitions. 
Also at the BCPS Fest, Dr. Williams, board members, and BCPS staff welcome students and families with many exciting activities to get them ready for the school year. We appreciate the math office who sent us a gift um, that they provided to students. BCPS math can take us to infinity. So we appreciate that and we're gonna take that message with us through the rest of the school year. For many, the state fair signaled the end of the summer. This was true for BCPS because just last week, board members accompanied Dr. Williams as he made his way through the county to welcome students, staff, families on the first official day of school. It was fun to see their excitement and anticipation on the faces of all of the folks, administrators, teachers, families, and the students. I'm excited and pleased that the county executive recently announced last week that the county was allocating initial planning money for new schools for Towson High and Delaney High. This is in addition to the planning and design money that was previously allocated for Lansdowne High. This planning money for Delaney and Towson will allow for feasibility studies, which will facilitate moving these projects forward as state monies become available. BCPS looks forward to a continued partnership with Baltimore County in the development of an objective and equitable 10-year capital plan that will address the needs of all schools throughout the BCPS footprint. While celebrating our good news, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the transportation issues that some families experienced last week. I am confident that Dr. Jess Grimm, BCPS's new Director of Transportation since late July, his two new senior operations supervisors who were appointed in August, and the remainder of the transportation team are doing all they can to ensure the safe and timely trans transportation of every student in BCPS. Out of our 115,000 or more students, we'll know for sure on September 30th, about 84,000 of them are transported every day. In the interim, parents should contact school administration with emergent transportation problems or contact the transportation office at 443-809-4321. In addition, the board will receive a report on transportation at its September 24th, 2019 meeting. Please know that the school system is working diligently to resolve outstanding issues. Today is World Awareness, World Suicide Awareness and Prevention Day. I was given this t-shirt by a school counselor as BCPS kicks off Mind Over Matters campaign, which is a system-wide campaign. Suicide prevention is an area of focus for BCPS's school safety and climate team. The theme for September is Listening Matters designed to bring awareness to the issue of suicide and focus on resources and prevention. Our student member of the board will speak more about this and we support all of his efforts on behalf of students. Finally, I would like to publicly acknowledge all of the hard work of BCPS facilities and maintenance personnel throughout the county over the summer months. Their efforts resulted in students returning to clean, well-lit, freshly painted schools and classrooms and well-tended playgrounds and fields. Please know that your efforts did not go unnoticed and that they are most appreciated. I will end by wishing our students, families, teachers, and administrators the best school year ever. Our next item is our student member of the board's report. Good evening. Since our board meeting on August 6th, I had the chance to dig deeper into BCPS and the work we are doing here. I had the chance to attend the student board member orientation hosted by MABE, as well as our BCPS board retreat. These opportunities allowed me to connect with fellow board members and our superintendent. We also had our Baltimore County Student Council's executive board meeting where we got to meet our board members and, inter and have interactive activities where we learned more about each other and the roles we are doing here. Guided by our president, Angela, and got surprised by our superintendent who came in and met each and every one of our student council members. This month is Suicide Awareness Month. The Suicide Awareness Month group work group also met to discuss our themes for the month for the 2019-2020 school year and are now promoting our Mind Over Matter campaign, which you can see Ms. Kazi is wearing, to raise awareness about mental health and promote wellness for our students and staff. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and September 10th is World Suicide Prevention Day, which is today. For anyone needing support, especially for students, 
the back of your BCPS ID, there is a hotline you can call if you need any help. I attended my first board curriculum meeting where we got in-depth data of programs like AVID in our curriculum. I had the honor to attend and introduce our superintendent at the administrative and supervisory meeting where I met a lot of our great administrators who will lead us to success here in BCPS. With the help of our BCSC president and Ms. Murray, we went to the ELA staff meeting to promote the small position and the election process to introduce our new partnership with the ELA and social studies. So we have a strong candidacy for the coming years and also have time to provide an opportunity for every secondary student to have a chance to cast a vote for the next student board member. What an amazing first day of school. I hope every student felt that way. I finished class at 1040 and was able to meet with fellow board members, elected officials, and the superintendent to do school visits at Randallstown High School, Ridgely Middle School, who gave us a warm welcoming. I got to see students learning and have a chance to interact with them. I plan on visiting a lot more schools with Delaney, Catonsville, Carver Center, and tomorrow I will be visiting Sparrows Point Middle and High School. These schools had students who reached out to me via social media polls and asked me to come visit. Yesterday, we filmed our first episode of Chat Cafe, where students come together to talk about different topics, to be, so be sure to check that out. And students, let me know if you have any topics you would like to be discussed or if you would like to be on the show. We had a splendid first week of school and hope to continue carrying the same positive energy. As always, students feel free to reach out to me via social media. And remember, hashtag I will listen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. Our next item of business is item K, action taken in closed session. And for that, we call on Mr. Nussbaum for consideration of those actions taken in closed session. Thank you, good evening. Good evening. Earlier this evening, the board considered two appeals regarding confidential student matters in your quasi-judicial capacity. Uh, both of these appeals were considered on the record as no timely requests for oral arguments were made. At this time, it would be appropriate to confirm the action that was taken in closed session in those matters. They were summary affirmance. Uh, they were both summary affirmances. It was hearing examiner numbers 19-47 and 20-05. Do I have a motion to approve the actions taken in closed session? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, and the two orders are on the table over there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nussbaum. The next item of business is item L, new business, contract awards, and for that, I call on committee chair, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Members of the board, the board's building and contracts committee met earlier this evening. Items L1 and items L3 through L8 are being forwarded to the full board for approval. Item L2 is being forwarded without recommendation. Do I have a motion to approve items L1 and L3 through L8? Thank you, Ms. Rowe. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Ms. Hen? Madam Chair, I move that the board postpone the vote on item L2 until the next board meeting so that information can be gathered from staff that was requested in committee. Is there a second to Ms. Hen's motion? Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Discussion? Okay, all in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Any opposed? Any abstain? One abstention, thank you. The motion carries. Thank you for the work on the committee. Thank you. Our next item is item M, new business, special project request, Potspring Elementary School. And for that, we call on Ms. Byers. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Chair Causey, Vice Chair Hen, members of the board. 
Tonight, I am bringing forward for approval a privately funded capital project to build and install an edible garden at Potspring Elementary School. The approximate cost of $7,000 for this project is being funded by the Potspring PTA. Um, in your packet, you have the quotes that reflect that for fencing and for the materials. Um, in addition, the beds will be built by the Carver Center CTE program. This has gone through all of our normal channels and processes for approval. Do I have a motion to approve the Pot Spring Elementary School Edible Garden Project? Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Do I have a second? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. Is there any discussion? Mr. McMillian? Believe it or not, I'm a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I can't I'm believe not. it neither. <laughs> I'm curious about the size of your garden and, and describe the, the fencing that, to secure this garden. <laughs> do you have that kind of data? I do. A lot of it's in your packet, actually. Okay. So there are four beds. Um, one of them is actually wheelchair accessible. They're three and a half by six feet each. Okay. So the fencing dimensions, I don't know off the top of my head. But, but is it depth. like a six-foot fence, an eight-foot fence? Any idea? I'm just curious. I, oh, thank you, Jane. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Martin, principal of Pottsburg Elementary. It's an eight-foot fence. <laughs> yeah, that keep the deer and the hoodlums from jumping over. Th <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. I think we have much more concern about the deer <laughs> and the rabbits. I, I, I hear they're plentiful down there. And I do want to acknowledge the principal, Ms. Martin, and uh, the PTA president, Ms. Marie Depew. Thank you for joining us this evening. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. And we look forward to visiting the garden in the future. And I invite Mr. McMillian to come, come with me. and. Uh, and visit that and see how the students are learning. Thank, Thank you. you so much. The next item is item N, consideration of board policies. First, I want to say that at its August 6, 2019 meeting, the Board of Education approved revisions to policy 8130, policy formulation. As amended, the policy replaces the three-reader approval of policies with a two-reader process. This new process will begin with policies forwarded from the Policy Review Committee for board approval this school year, starting with the committee's September 16th meeting. Policies scheduled for a first reading will be available to the public when the board agenda is released. Concurrent with the publishing of the board agenda, the policies will also be available for public comment on the school system's policy webpage at www.bcps.org slash system slash policies underscore rules slash open for comment dot ASP. And also, if you just want to look for it, go to the bcps.org website and you'll be able to find it when you uh, query for policies. During the first reading, the public and board members have an opportunity to comment on the policy proposal during the regular public meeting. Based on the comments received, the Policy Review Committee has the option of reviewing and incorporating in its proposal comments from the public and board members. At the second reading, the board takes final action on the policy. This new process will be in effect with policies currently scheduled for a first reading on October 22, 2019. And now, in line with our former process, we're considering unfinished business Members of the board, the Policy Review Committee asks that the board accept this report of the committee's recommendations to amend the following board policies. Policy 3710, Safety and Security Equipment. Policy 4102, Sexual Harassment. Policy 4201, Employee Insurance Benefits. And Policy 5320, Student Organizations and Clubs. These recommendations are presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit N. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendation of the Board's Policy Review Committee? Thank you, Ms. Rowe. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Any abstained? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. 
Our next item is item O, unfinished business, fiscal year 2021 state capital budget. The proposed state capital budget was introduced at the board meeting on Tuesday, August 6, 2019, and discussed at the board work session on Tuesday, August 20th, 2019. State funded project requests require verification of county matching funds before final state approval. We call on Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to provide any additional information on the proposed fiscal year 2021 state capital budget. We will then allow time for discussion and questions if needed and desired by the board. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Hen, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. Um, as Ms. Causey previously stated, um, this item was brought to you in, on April 6th, and we had a work session on April 20th, and there has been a, a series of questions that the team has received from um, the board as well as community members are re relating to um, the state capital request that is before you today that we're seeking your approval to move forward. Um, there has been quite a bit of discussion and we are here tonight to address any additional follow-up questions before the vote is taken. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And just for um, our audience, and uh, stakeholders, I want to say that the questions and answers are posted on our website. So all of the questions that were submitted and the answers developed by staff, and we thank Dr. Williams for having staff uh, thoroughly answer those questions and make that available on our website. Do I have a motion to approve the proposed fiscal year 2021 capital, state capital budget request as presented in Exhibit O? Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Do I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Hen. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you, the motion carries. I do just wanna point out that the student member was not eligible to vote on this item. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next item is item P, board member comments. And for that, I will go around the room and seeking comments from the board members. Mr. Offerman, would you like to start us off? Yes, as a, as a former Baltimore County counselor for, uh, for 27 years, uh, I'd like to comment that uh, uh, the teachers, the counselors, the cafeteria workers, the bus drivers, the maintenance people, the custodial staff are all on the front line when it comes to getting information about children. Often things are not said at home or things that should trigger a warning are not noticed. And, but sometimes in school, they, they become those, if not by the student, by the student's friends. So I ask everyone in BCPS, all the shareholders, all the, everyone involved to understand that this is not just a one day event or, or a one month warning. This is, a, this is a, such a critical piece okay, of, of what we need to do in order to ensure the safety and the healthy development of all of our kids, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, I've seen so many people who do such a great job when I was, when I was in school, when, when, I, when I was a counselor in the schools that I was in, and, uh, you know, I, I commend them for that, and I, and I commend for the parents who have the courage to go seek help when sometimes it's, some, some people are considered an embarrassment to the family. I think you have to go beyond that I think you must keep in mind what this is all about. And this is about the welfare of the most important resource we will ever have. And that's, and that's our children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Mr. Kuhn? I just wanted to, um, to say um, welcome back to school to all the children. Um, my. Um, I have children in, in high school, middle school, and elementary school in the system. I am actually have uh, missed the back to school night at West Towson across the street tonight. Hopefully my wife was able to attend. Uh, that was the plan. Uh, I had the opportunity and the pleasure to go to uh, Towson High School's back to school night uh, recently, and that was well run and very informative. Um, and I look forward to going to Dumbarton's back to school night, uh, I believe tomorrow night. So um, a lot going on, a lot of activity. Uh, I hope everybody is adjusting and transitioning back to school well 
and I just want to uh, wish everyone a fantastic school year. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pasture? Good evening, and I, too, want to um, um, say thank you for everything that everyone has done with parent, um, with uh, staff, in terms of um, getting us to this point, coming out of last year um, and beginning anew. I'm sort of... Um, taken here because I have a completely new vision and direction as I go into my second year. Um, last year it was about learning. This year I am really on a kind of a mission about making sure that our underserved children are uh, not just adequ adequately served, uh, but that we are moving rigorously to a level playing field. Uh, I am, I want to start with um, uh, Ms. Christine Byers uh, because I know from where she came and I'm going to hit on that in a second. So I'm real happy with money that has been found um, to serve our children on um, um, in the high schools, always happy to see when our children are served, as Mr. Kuhn and uh, Mr. Offerman have just said. And I am brought to this line from Gwendolyn Brooks' poem, For My People, For the Cramped, Bewildered Years We Went to School to Learn to Know the Reasons Why the People Who and the Places Where, in memory of the bitter hours, we discovered that we were black and small and poor and different and nobody cared and nobody understood. And listening to some of the things that have been said tonight um, by our parents, and so all of this brings me to Millbrook Elementary School, as we find um, money and work with funds in this county and in this state. And I started with uh, Ms. Byers because they have a history of having principals and teachers who have worked against the odds because when Millbrook was built in 1967, I was 18. That was 52 years ago. So if, it, if that's a long time, I'm old, that means it's old. All right, and it means that while it does not appear on any list, there's something wrong in that configuration. But I do want to thank Mr. Smith because I went in there Friday, as the children used to say, feeling some kind of way. And I went in and saw that the lockers had been painted and the rooms have been painted and there's a new gym floor and that the principal is working on doing what is necessary to um, make the acoustics in that cafeteria what they should be so we are not uh, disabling our young people. And that is going to be one of my missions this year. So get ready to be sick of me talking about it, sick of hearing it. And I really don't care because none of our children for any reason should be disenfranchised in this system because maybe the parents are too quiet or the corner on which it sits is not a real popular corner. And it has uh, a number of populations that no one has seen to care about, but I care about it, and I'm going to make sure that we pay attention to that. And I will say, as I conclude, that I said everything I just said to the county executive yesterday, and he said, well, let's go take a visit, and we will. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. Mr. Hayden? All I can say to that is ditto, and that would put me uh, off here, but I think one of the things that all of us, uh, particularly as parents, as educators, uh, have to keep in mind as we move forward. It, it, I like to talk about sustainability. It's very easy to get started with a lot of them in vigor in the start of the school year. Have all of this enthusiasm and, uh, I, I know this is not a word, but this gung-ho-ness uh, of being into it and let's get it going. And like many things in life, you, you sort of just tail off. So 
I think it's important that all of us consider as we move forward throughout the school year, how do we sustain the enthusiasm? We want to sustain the enthusiasm for our young people. We want to sustain the enthusiasm for our staff uh, and, uh, and our teachers. And uh, we on the board have to work on that for ourselves. So I think it's going to be a great school year. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Ms. Hen? Thank you. So what Mr. Hayden said, no. Um, I'm particularly excited about this year. Um, back to school time is my absolute favorite time of year. Some feel rejuvenated when spring comes along. For me, it's fall. It's, you know, the school supplies, the backpacks, you know, the new supplies. I was the geeky kid who couldn't wait to get back to school. And let me tell you that I feel like a kid again this year. And it's the newness. It's the gentleman two seats away from me at the dais, Dr. Williams, the enthusiasm, your excitement. It's contagious. It absolutely is. Every school I've visited, every person in Team BCPS I talk to, they cannot say enough. Um, keep doing what you're doing because it, it absolutely is contagious. And our kids feel it. And those that um, work with our kids are spreading it. And I can't say much more about that. And like Mr. Hayden said, let's sustain it. Let's keep it going. Um, as Ms. Causey said, I'd, I'd be remiss that there weren't some challenges the first week, um, particularly in the Northeast with transportation. But you know what? We've got parents who are anxious to get their kids to school. We've got kids who are anxious to get to school. And that's a blessing in and of itself. When you have kids and parents who are anxious to get to school, that, that's a good problem to have. And we will um, rise to the, the challenges. We've got great leadership in place. I have every optimism that we, we will get through this. Um, changes are tough. Transitions are tough. We will get through it. And we've got a great community, um, both within Team BCPS, the, the whole of it. And I think our optimism, our energy, and our excitement are what's going to get us through. And this is going to be a fantastic year. I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Mr. McMillian. Uh, good evening. As a former Baltimore County teacher, I was extremely excited about the start of the school year. However, as excited as I was, I'm very, very saddened by this experience that the Burgess family has, has been exposed to. Uh, and we need to somehow try to correct that. Uh, I want to be a lifelong learner. I know some of the education piece of this. I want to continue learning this. I became aware recently of, of the impact of residential development on our overcrowded schools, and specifically Spares Point Middle and Spares Point High School. I've become aware of there's a school input analysis that the developers submit to the county for review, and I'm really concerned about the accuracy of this document, the information that they get from us, and how they use that information, and even the accuracy of our information that we're presenting to them. On Friday, September 13th, I encourage the residents of the southeast area to go to the Jefferson Building at 10 a.m and be part of this review process. It's in room 205. This is the opportunity for the people of the Southeast area to step up and let their voices be heard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Mack? Good evening. I would like to th thank County Executive Olszewski for his pledge of $15 million in planning and design money for a new Lansdowne High School. There's much work ahead, but this is a huge step in the right direction. Like Ms. Pasteur, I look forward to the day when there is money to meet the needs of all schools and all students. I would also like to send a shout out to Arbutus Elementary, Baltimore Highlands Elementary, Lansdowne Elementary, Relay, and Westchester Elementaries, which are District 1 schools holding their back to school activities tonight. I am hopeful that all back to school initiatives throughout BCPS are packed with parents and caregivers ready to partner with BCPS to ensure that their children have an absolutely great school year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Ms. Scott? Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm very um, excited about the school year of Others Have Said. I think it's a great time for um, kids to go back to school, and I know that it's going to be wonderful. Um, earlier this month, I had an opportunity to tour several schools with the superintendent and other elected officials and um, several members of the board. It was uh, really a 
a wonderful experience. And um, I just would like to highlight the exceptional staff and student body at Randallstown High School, um, led by their principal there, um, Mr. Aubrey Brown, as well as recognizing the dedicated staff and principal um, Archellis at Woodlawn Middle School. They were gracious and open their schools to us, and I'm sure that they made it look easy, but I'm sure that was not easy on the first day of school to have visitors and kids and, and everyone. So I just really would like to thank them for that. And lastly, um, I attended a PTA meeting yesterday at Deer Park Middle School where I was able to hear from parents about what they would like to see accomplished during this school year. And it was very heartening to see the community involvement, working with teachers, working um, with the principal there, Dr. Candace Taylor, and working together as a community and a team of parents really crafting what they want to see for their school and for their students. And with that kind of involvement, and myself, I was able to come. I was invited by the PTA um, to be a part of that. And I, I thank them for allowing me to be a part of that. And I know that will be the success um, for our schools and for the upcoming school year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Ms. Rowe? So I just have a couple things I want to say. The first thing is to the parents who are watching. This administration and this staff, as you saw, is what happened with the Burgess family. They had a situation. They didn't feel like they got a resolution within their schoolhouse, and they weren't satisfied. So what did they do? They reached out to the administration. And parents should understand that when you reach out to the administration, the administration is going to reach back, and they're going to find a solution to help you. But one of the things I hear from people who initially sometimes reach out to me when I tell them to fill out the bullying, intimidation, and harassment form online is there's a response I get that makes me feel like they think we're just pushing them off to another form. So I wanted to explain that that form is not just another form for parents to fill out or get pushed off to another form. That form triggers a series of actions. It goes to the Office of School Climate and Safety. It goes to the principal. I believe it may go to the area superintendent. But it goes to people outside the schoolhouse whose responsibility it is to provide the schoolhouse with professional development, with guidance and assistance in how to deal with different things, and with accountability to follow up on these kinds of situations. So to parents, it's important that you fill out the form if there's something that occurs in your schoolhouse, particularly something like bullying or harassment, um, whether it's racial, whether it's sexual, it doesn't matter. Whether it's violence, whatever it is, it is important that you fill out the form. Because if you don't fill out the form, how are we going to know what's going on? So please fill out the form. The other thing I wanted to say is that we just approved our budget and for this year's capital improvement plan. And I understand that there are a lot of needs all over the county that aren't on any list. I have plenty of schools in my district, and there's plenty of schools in every single district that have facilities issues but not overcrowding, overcrowding but not facilities issues, and some of them have both facilities issues and overcrowding, and a lot of those schools aren't on the list. But in working on a 10-year capital plan and being patient with that and getting that done over the next year, then we can have a list that truly means something that doesn't change with every political administration with every new election, every four years, every eight years. And that list can mean something. So I would just like to ask the community to be patient as we work through as a county, as a school system, as a state looking for the funding, because we have needs that far outweigh the available funding. How are we going to do this? And to just be patient and know that we are working on all how to fix all the other schools that have needs. But that takes time, and it takes a conscientious plan. And that plan was funded by the county. County's working on the RFP, and we'll get there. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the work and engagement of all of the board members. It's really um, just fantastic 
to work with each of you. The next item on our agenda for this evening is item Q, information. Attached to board docs is the revised superintendent's rule 3720 non-instructional services safety and security behavior threat assessment. So that's available for everyone to review on board docs. And finally this evening item R is announcements. Our next board meeting is Tuesday, September 24th, 6.30 p.m. right here in Greenwood Building E. And it's again it starts at 6.30 p.m. and again we just uh, welcome everyone back to the school year and we wish everyone a healthy and happy and really uh, academically rigorous year. Thank you very much. Our meeting is adjourned.